Hello there, I'm Mount Payne 27 and this is Dean of Doom, the show where we give grades to classic and contemporary Doom wads. Why? because ranking things is fun. Today's episode will be dedicated to Doom 64, at long last. Re-released on a spanking new port alongside 2020's Doom Eternal, Doom 64 rose in public esteem from cult classic to classic classic status, reaching a new audience of retro gamers and infiltrating the quiet corners of eternal pre-orderers' Steam libraries. Originally released for the Nintendo 64 in 1997, Doom 64 was developed by Midway Games, then best known for porting Doom to the PlayStation and N64. Three designers at Midway, Randy Andy Estrella, Tim Hadelar, and Danny Lewis created 32 original maps for a new installment in the franchise that employed a modified version of the Doom engine, one that could handle scripted events, primitive colored lighting, and more. The game also features a completely new set of sound effects, an ambient soundtrack courtesy of PlayStation Doom composer Aubrey Hodges, and a dizzying array of new textures, sprites, and graphics. At the expense of Doom 64's comparatively excellent console performance, certain concessions were made to the gameplay. Doom 2's standards like the Archfile, Revenant, and Chain Gunner were removed Moved, and the remaining two hitscan enemies were made to share the same set of sprites. I first played Doom 64 in January of 2021 during the break between Seasons 1 and 2, and have never owned a Nintendo 64, so let it be known that this review is coming from someone untouched by nostalgia for this game or the system it was made for. Without further ado, here's how the show works. Every map gets one grade for quality and one for difficulty. On the quality side, the grades go from A to F. Grade A levels are fun, memorable, visually distinctive, creative, and a fair challenge. Difficulty grades go from X to E. X for extreme, E for easy, A through D in between. Keep in mind, I probably won't have the same ideas about what makes a great level as you do, but that's okay. Disagreeing is part of the fun, after all. At the end of the day, this show is about spreading the joy of doom, so let's do so. Before we start, the rules are we play on ultra violence, or in this case, watch me die, and normally I insist on pistol starting each level, but Doom 64 places particular emphasis on continuous play, so I will be carrying over weapons from previous levels. These reviews do not apply to pistol started playthroughs. I need to play the wad twice before reviewing it, saves are allowed, and we go for 100% kills in all levels, making exceptions when it's just not worth it. Doom 64 does not have an in-game kill counter, so there may be a few instances where I give up at 98% kills or so. We'll be using the 2020 edition of Doom 64, available on Steam, and covering just the original 32 levels. Sorry, Kaiser. Now, to the maps. Map 1, Staging Area. Staging Area is probably the best opening map in commercial Doom, setting the tone for a horror-based FPS experience with sparse enemy placement, tucked away secrets, weird lighting, and of course, Aubrey Hodge's chilling score. The sound design in this game is really something else. You'll hardly ever use it, especially in a continuous playthrough, but the Doom 64 pistol outperforms your typical sidearm. I like the sprite, the sound, and its faster temp fire rate. The double-bladed chainsaw is also disgustingly overpowered. If you don't believe me, rev this baby up and watch it work. While I'm weighing in on content replacements, the Doom 64 pinkies have always looked wrong to me. Too claymation for my taste. Something I noticed recently about staging area, the placement of the blue key changes depending on which difficulty you choose, which is pretty uncommon even in contemporary mapping. If you want to see everything Doom 64 has to offer, don't shoot this first barrel and take this teleporter back to the start when you've killed everything else. Drop the two zombies that appear, blow up the barrel, and if you've gotten all the others, a secret exit will open. Staging area lays Doom 64's cards on the table. What you see is what you're going to get from now on. Grade B+, difficulty E. Map 32, Hectic. Only the best will reap its rewards. Yeah... What are those again? All I got out of Hectic was a rocket launcher and a steep medical bill. To escape this gimmicky death trap, eliminate three arachnitrons in a shoebox with a rocket launcher, kill four hell knights over a death pit, and survive an idiotic booby-trapped chamber with only a single berserk pack to patch your wounds. Hectic is a pain in the ass, an extremely rude treatment for players who went out of their way to track it down in the pre-YouTube era. It's really not worth it. Grade F. Difficulty, B-. Map 2, the Terraformer. Memorable mostly for this Hulk smash device. The Terraformer also makes striking use of colored lighting, plays around with scripting in this teleporting key sequence, and debuts the chain gun, which is radically more powerful than its Doom 2 counterpart. Good for suppressing crowds, stunning heavies, and long-range sniping. The only real source of danger in this level is the crusher hallway leading to the red key, or getting shot coming in from Hectic with no health. I'm leaning on the chainsaw here not to preserve ammo, but because it's more fun to see what I can get away with and playing straight up. Grade B, difficulty E. Footnote, why bother putting light amp goggles on the map when they don't do sh 
Map 3, Main Engineering. Another level that does little besides introduce more Doom 64 content. Main Engineering starts off by slapping a super shotgun in your hand, and let me tell you folks right now, I don't like it. Don't get me wrong, it's one of the game's most useful weapons, and its beefy firing sound comes the closest I've seen to replacing Doom 2's, but without the reload animation, it's so hard to take seriously. The Nightmare Imps, Cacodemons, and Lost Souls also make their first appearances here, and of the three, I'm only scared of Lost Souls. Nightmare Imps are essentially just imps, but purple. Cacodemons can be chainsawed more reliably, they're slow and even more dopey looking than pinkies, but Lost Souls are fast, vicious, and always come in packs. Fighting them low on bullets is one of the few things in Doom 64 that makes me nervous. Throw in some snazzy scripted sequences and you've got yourself a map. Grade C+, difficulty D-. Map 4, Holding Area. This perfunctory map reintroduces the Hell Knight, who's more muscle-bound and rubbery than I remember, and buries a secret exit behind a switch puzzle that locks permanently if you fail. Making players in 97 replay the map every time they want to test a new combination is a brand of meanness that I'm sure isn't missed much in games today. Behind the regular exit door is a preview of what lies ahead action-wise grade C, difficulty D-. Map 29, Outpost Omega. The first proper secret map in Doom 64, Outpost Omega is ominous, puzzle-focused, and infinitely more materially rewarding than hectic. It also throws the first Mancubi and Pain Elementals at you, which are my two most feared demons in the game. Pain Elementals chug out lost souls much more rapidly than their Doom 2 derivatives and explode when killed, making them the highest potential damage dealer you'll face until you meet the Cyber Demon. Doom 64 Mancubi, on the other hand, throw me for a loop. Their projectiles travel at change-up speed, and I have issues acclimating to their firing pattern without hump your mom to cue me. The highlight of the map is the Yellow Maze, which contains a key of the same color, a what the f*** is this, and the first demon key of the game, which you'll need a hard-to-find red key to unlock after you solve this surprisingly tasteful shootable switch puzzle. Demon keys, as many of you already know, power up your super-secret weapon 8, whose de facto name is the Unmaker. I try to use it whenever I have cells, because it tends to undress the game's hardest fights when you hoard ammo for it. Outpost Omega's exit is clogged with pain elementals. Don't think you're safe behind these caged windows. Grade B minus, difficulty D plus. Map five, Tech Center. Tech Center is the most forgettable level so far, which is unfortunate because it's also one of the more thoroughly plotted out maps in the game to this point. Getting the red key is kind of a pain. You have to find the right door in the hub, traverse a crusher hallway with a hell knight at the end, and don't let a caco distract you from this switch, which raises the bars. I probably took more damage from crushers than monsters here. Tech Center's combat is best summarized by this series of interconnected rooms with hell knights and ex-soldiers. Grade C minus, difficulty D minus. Map six, Alpha Quadrant. The eye-catching and up-tempo Alpha Quadrant makes a strong first impression, bludgeoning the player with zombies, lost souls, and barons of hell. The only difference between these red fiends and their Doom 2 variants is that they can infight with hell knights. I love the look of this sickly yellow room and the perilous arena right after it. If I wasn't so flush with rockets, the barons, pain elemental, and specters in the dark pit below would have eaten me for breakfast. I wish Doom 64 brought the heat like this more often. Word to the wise, if you want this caged megasphere, listen closely. Grade B+, plus, difficulty C-. Minus. Map 7, Research Lab. Research Lab continues to lay on the atmosphere, but it's considerably slower and more repetitive than Map 6. With the exception of this pants-wetting lost soul ambush, nothing in this map gives cause for worry. In four identical stages, you can find three keys and a plasma rifle. I wish I liked this gun. It looks like a million bucks, but its slow rate of fire renders it vastly outclassed by the other two plasma weapons. The ambient sizzling noise it emits also makes me want to holster it. This rare environmental hazard segment is an excellent showcase for Doom 64's colored lighting. The green-tinted walls really sell the poison phosphorescence. Visuals aside, Research Lab is another unassuming tech base. Grade C, difficulty D. Map 8, Final Outpost. This map gave me trouble in my first Doom 64 playthrough. Shotgunners and nightmare imps are abundant, health really isn't, and the final fight is a ball buster. You're forced to fend off four barons and a pair of hell knights closing in on both sides. If you fall in the pit, you're done for. Nowadays, my biggest problem is remembering how to solve this yellow key puzzle. The solution is, there is no solution. Leave the room and press on this yellow X to lower the block the key is sitting on. Gotta take points off for the lack of an audible cue. Also, I have to admit this particular Aubrey Hodges track is kind of distracting. It took me a while to realize that enemies were not, in fact, teleporting around me all the time. Final Outpost closes out Doom 64's first episode. Eight maps in, and it's already time to take the plunge into hell. Grade C+, difficulty D. Map 9, Even Simpler. 
not really. Much more stressful and complex than Dead Simple, even simpler starts off with the old familiar Mancubus Shuffle, but uncorks two rounds of new stuff in rapid succession. Hell Knights and Cacodemons first, and then a load of Barons, more Mancubi, and four Pain Elementals. Milk that invuln for all it's worth, and don't linger in the outer ring because those dart traps hurt like hell. Even simpler is quite the gut punch after the sweet lullaby of Doom 64's first eight non-secret maps, but it's about time, I say. Grade B, difficulty C. Map 10, The Bleeding. Something about this map has stuck with me. After the unbridled frenzy of even simpler, Doom 64's signature quiet rings a lot of paranoia out of a short and relatively open level. This is one of the game's more eccentric maps in terms of color coordination, an alien blend of greens, blues, browns, and pinks. The sky is especially striking, an unearthly burnt umber haze billowing above all. The Bleeding is also the first map you'll find a BFG in. Interact with this creepy face to raise a step to the big freaking gun and unleash hell. Despite it feeling a little wimpier than your standard super weapon, the bright green flash and unearthly sound effect when the ball strikes its target are rock solid. After routing the last brigade of demons, you're free to go. Grade B, difficulty D+. Map 11, Terror Core. One of Doom 64's most visually cohesive maps so far, and the first of several fortress-type levels you'll encounter in the game, Terror Core is a storming of the castle in the middle of an actual storm. Once again, the setting is there, but the action really isn't. After the opening scramble, the only fight worthy of note is this ambush in the courtyard with lost souls, specters, and imps. It all comes down to how many bullets you've got in your backpack. Checking Doom Wiki after the fact, it makes sense that I was feeling under the gun health-wise. If you don't dig up the Soul Sphere secret, you're left with just seven stims and three medikits. For that reason, the shotgun or threesome that spawns around you the exit can kindly piss off. Grade C+, difficulty C-. Map 12, Altar of Pain. Another hell spawn outpost, Altar of Pain is more worse for wear than the keep you just sacked, slowly sinking into the swamp as the thunder rumbles overhead. I hate to sound like a broken record, but this map wants for actual stuff to do. I spent more time in this recording looking for the red key than I did shooting demons. I'll admit to having subpar observational skills, but it's not easy to concentrate on vague signposting when I'm nodding off. You know things are getting dire when a sextuplet of barons is the high watermark of a map's excitement. I was gonna rip this fake wall secret exit a new one before I noticed that the rock you use to jump onto it is shaped like a crude arrow. Obvious enough to count as a clue, but rough enough to escape detection. Not bad. Grade C, difficulty D+. Map 30, The Lair. A quiet and seemingly empty demon hideout, The Lair is a simple infiltration mission. Get in, get the keys you need, and get out. Don't let the nightmare imps overwhelm you and ready the chain gun when you go down to the basement. This map's seizure key can be obtained by solving a shootable switch puzzle, which took me far too long to notice, because the sound effect of the switch revealing itself is identical to a lift lowering. You can also interact with the statue for a very obscure and unnecessary berserk pack. I was too busy bashing Hectic to talk about Doom 64's Arachnitrons, but suffice to say, I think they're the most improved monster in the lineup. These bionic bastards are intimidating, sleekly rendered, and immaculately sound designed. Top marks. Grade B minus, difficulty D minus. Map 13, Dark Citadel. I have no concept of what Doom 64 maps are considered favorites, but if I had to guess, Dark Citadel would probably make some top 10 lists. It's dripping with quake like apprehension, lit beautifully, and contains enough memorable set pieces to lodge itself in your memory. The solemn library with surprises around every turn, the pair of shootouts in the gargoyle courtyard. Oh, and don't forget the mega armor that drops you into a death pit, and the trapped blue key that you essentially can't avoid damage picking up. I would rather fight 15 pain elementals at once than wiggle my way through a dark trap. These sequences feel like health taxes, and I resent them. Moody though it is, my complaint with this map and a whole line of others is that most of it comes down to... I imagine this level would be more fun and gripping played with a controller. Grade C+, difficulty D. Map 14, Eye of the Storm. Another fortification to topple, Eye of the Storm attempts a hot start, filling its moat with heavies that are totally ineffectual at killing you. I thought I'd have to comment about how Doom 64's movement feels a bit more sluggish than its PC parent games, but Midway's map makers almost always compensate for your lower dexterity with spacious layouts, which I appreciate. Handle the lost souls and pain elementals in the castle with care, and watch out for chip damage on the map's 25 shotgunners. If a fresh BFG in some cells sounds like fun to you, tickle this severed head hanging from the wall and catch the lift. Once again, Eye of the Storm is pretty, but also pretty uninteresting. I'm not bored, you're bored. 
Grade C+, Difficulty D+. Map 15, Dark Entries. Finally, some combat you can sink your teeth into. Without so much as a how do you do, Dark Entries introduces Doom 64's newest memory-saving concession. These homing fireballs are a poor substitute for revenants and don't appear often enough to merit discussion. Just be ready to run from them every time you come back here. Dark Entries' cup runneth over with arachnatrons and lost souls. The more you screw up the blue key puzzle, the more flaming skulls you'll meet, and the map's feature fight, which makes my personal top three in the game, throws ten spiders and a lot of hell nobles at you all at once. It's like go to it for Doom 64, and a perfect demo for the Unmaker Plus 2. After that, cross the bridge to the Red Key, lob rockets at the morons blocking the path back, and neutralize the last gaggle of goons awaiting you at the start. Dark Entries is a welcome pinch to any hardened Doom player who might have been slipping into a siesta. Not me, of course. Grade B+, difficulty C+. Map 16, Blood Keep. Probably my favorite of the Stronghold levels, Blood Keep balances its quiet moments with a steady stream of violence. It's one of the game's beefier maps, with a kill count in the 160s that includes 18 cacodemons, 29 barney imps, and 31 lost souls. I remember getting a bit turned around on this map during early playthroughs, getting the red and yellow keys especially cryptic if you're not paying attention to changes in the map, but the payoff is pretty satisfying. The library is full of stuff to kill, and the blue key ambush can be quite nasty if you're caught off guard. The ending is also brutal, particularly if you're out of bullets or playing saveless. You'll sink into a death pit if you're not standing on the center of the room when the last fight ends. Devilish stuff. Grade B, difficulty C-. Map 17, watch your step. Sometimes simplicity is key. The best run of maps in Doom 64 starts with Watch Your Step, a pair of foggy arenas that steadily fill with teleporting enemies. Disturbing the crosses on the floor summons a lot of foes, especially if you had several of them at once. Continuous players had the luxury of thumbing their noses at the map's title warning. If you're squeamish about big fights, I recommend hunting down the Megasphere and Invuln secrets in this room before facing the ending. Personally, I couldn't be bothered. After waves of hit scanners, imps, pinkies, hell knights, mancubi, and arachnatrons, a pair of cyber demons will pop in and see who's been causing all this trouble. With enough cells and a pair of demon keys, unmaking them takes less than 30 seconds. Grade B, difficulty C+. Map 18, Spawned Fear. One of the deadliest and most substantive maps in Doom 64, Spawned Fear lives up to its name, packing 42 lost souls and 10 pain elementals, the most in the game excluding the final map. Unlike some of the early maps which try harder, Spawned Fear is genuinely unnerving, thanks in part to the primordial grumbling of Aubrey Hodge's soundtrack. It's discomforting to see earthy settings in hell, and some of these fights are pretty dangerous. The Lost Soul, Hell Knight Seance, and the Triple Pain Elemental ambush by the caverns demand your attention. That is, unless you're packing cells. The fiery gully that leads to the yellow key is the only environmental hazard in Doom 64 that can get problematic if you don't know where to go, so step lively. Listen for an opening door on your way up the steps to the exit, run back the way you came, and catch the final secret exit before it closes. Grade B+, difficulty C. Map 31, In the Void. It's not a stretch to say Doom 64's reputation rests on its sinister atmosphere, and to me, no map succeeds at generating that quite so well as In the Void. The story text that introduces it doesn't even depict Doom Guy as a frothing lunatic. That's how serious this map is. After literally being dropped into a brood of feasting specters, you'll have to fight through one of the game's leanest monster rosters, all mancubi, hell nobles, stealth pinkies, and pain elemental families to reach three colorful skulls in the final demon key, which you have to run to catch before it disappears. Normally, I deal with this quadruple pain elemental ambush from the abyss by running and hiding, but this time, with my maxed out unmaker, I decided to stand my ground. Totally worth it. In the Void's otherworldly chills and terse fights make it one of Doom 64's highlights, and easily the best of the secret maps. Grade A-, difficulty C-. Map 19, The Spiral. It's no contest. The Spiral is the best combat set piece in Doom 64. Even simpler than even simpler and considerably more deadly, The Spiral unleashes three waves of demons, blocking the stairs with imps, mancubi, and hell nobles while airborne foes shell you with fireballs and skull children. Pain elementals outnumber all monster types except imps, and the last flock of them will glut the air with lost souls. The evilest part of it all is there are no bullets or shells in this map, so you better run like the dickens and watch where you point that rocket launcher. Admittedly, my standards are pretty low at this point combat-wise, but the spiral proves that Doom 64's gameplay could have been a whole lot more interesting if its developers had prioritized it. Footnote, we won't see any more pain elementals in this game until the last two maps. Grade A-, difficulty C+. Map 20, Breakdown. 
technically impressive but ultimately forgettable, Breakdown is a shape-shifting, mazy corridor shooter with a soundtrack that would find better use in Guantanamo Bay. At this point, I'm more peeved than creeped out. Breakdown simulates room over room with these quick raising and lowering floors. They may have been used earlier, but not more prominently than here. The trick is ahead of its time, but doesn't compensate for the map's snoring combat. If I were pistol starting, the heavy hit scan presence in this pinky room might pose some threat, but even then, there's a BFG tucked away and a not so secret secret here, and a megasphere you can grab if you stumble into this fake wall. I personally like to save it for the end so I can get a head start on embarrassing the next level. That's actually a great transition into. I thought about making a one-off video on this subject, but I think it's better to address it in the form of a digression, because discussion of the pros and cons of pistol starts is especially pertinent to Doom 64. As prevalent as it is amongst serious Doom players, pistol starting is a pretty strange concept if you think about it. Throwing away your inventory between levels and starting each map with a clean slate turns Doom wads into packs of discrete stages rather than unbroken campaigns. It disrupts narrative immersion, which affects some wads more than others, and destroys continuity at the expense of offering a greater challenge to the player and the ability to confront each level on its own terms. It's also an important calibration tool for the mapper, who will want the player to be able to beat their map from scratch if push comes to shove. In Dean of Doom's context, I always pistol start because each level deserves to be evaluated on its own terms. The best way to do that is to control the variables of health, ammo, and weapons you have at the start. For example, Pitfalls, the map after this one, plays very differently when you're pistol starting compared to where I'm at in this playthrough, carrying a full backpack with all the guns, a chainsaw, 200 health and armor, and three demon keys. Depending on the situation, pistol starting can even be an advantage. I'm sure we've all taken exits with 11 health, wondering what the hell we're gonna do if the next map surrounds us with gunmen at the start. Essentially, the conservative player will benefit from continuous play and feel punished by pistol starts, while the impetuous player will be permitted more liberties with ammo and health conservation playing with pistol starts, benefiting less from playing continuously. For my part, I used to feel inconvenienced by pistol starting, but have come to see it as my preferred method of playing for three additional reasons. Number one, it helped me appreciate the shotgun. Two, it makes picking up new weapons exciting. And three, it forces me into a wider variety of combat situations. Instead of facing every encounter after map 6 with a full inventory, I often have to get creative with my weaker weaponry to overcome the odds. As much as this format works for me in other wads, it feels wrong in Doom 64 because of the Unmaker and the Demon Keys. To give you a sense of growth across the whole game that Doom 1 and 2 lack, the most powerful weapons in Doom's first three episodes are available within the first three maps of each, and you get the BFG in Doom 2's first quarter. After that, the novelty of new weapons is completely gone in continuous play, but the same cannot be said for Doom 64. Even if it's just one weapon getting upgraded, that sense of progression feels vital to the whole experience. What's more, Doom 64's solemn atmosphere and regular text screen interjections make it feel more story-driven than any classic Doom game. In short, it made more sense for me to review it this way, and as a result, some of these maps, like Pitfalls, don't stand a chance. Breakdown gets a grade of C+, with a difficulty of D. Map 21, Pitfalls. Like Doom 2's The Living End, Pitfalls is a barren-infested cavern with strong height variation and a sense of gravitas. Unlike The Living End, this map is a piece of cake. There are two hazmat power-ups down in the magma if you fall, hit scanners are easy prey for your chain gun, and the procession of hell nobles and cacos that make up the rest can be dealt with one at a time. The only fight of substance is completely neutered by this invulnerability, which I use to rocket punch the barons instead of wasting on Maker. Pitfalls doesn't care much for explaining what it switches do and will pinball you between the cavern and dungeon until you get the red key, which unlocks the exit. Pistol starters don't miss the secret rocket launcher, which is pointed out by another helpful rock arrow. Grade B minus, difficulty D. Map 22, Burnt Offerings. The arachnatron capital of Doom 64, Burnt Offerings contains 23 brains on stainless steel legs. Hopefully you saved enough rockets or cells to disperse the large groups they tend to arrive in. Burnt Offerings incendiary sky sets the tone. Not that the level of difficulty reflects it, but you're in the belly of hell now. This mandatory trapped rocket launcher is the only truly threatening part of the map. Before or after you endure it, you're allowed to swallow a secret megasphere. The asterisk-shaped arena with the red key and the walls that rush to meet you is conceptually neat, and I kinda wish they'd made the ensuing fight more interesting. Grade B-, minus, difficulty D. Map 23, Unholy Temple. Despite its formidable appearance, Unholy Temple is one of the most sluggish and unpleasant maps in the game. Most of the action is trivial or grindy, best summarized by this room full of pink demons, and the level is plagued with smarmy devices like the red key crusher trap, this death pit, and the one-time introduction of doors that can only be opened by hitting primary colored switches in the correct sequence. Behind each lies a switch that removes a barrier from the exit. If you're concerned that making trips between the Switch console and places you've already visited might get boring, fear not, for the disembodied Revenant missiles have returned for an encore. 
Unholy Temple is a drab waste of time, and my least favorite stronghold map by a good margin. Grade D, difficulty D+. Map 24, No Escape. A no-nonsense arena-style map, No Escape is only as dire as your ability to dodge cyberdemon rockets. In my case, so-so. The map's 9 Mancubi and 3 Pain Elementals are worth playing gingerly around, but as long as your Unmaker is halfway juiced, you can zap the major threats and rocket the rest. Felling the Cyber Twins guarding the exit will end the level automatically. I admire and appreciate No Escape's brevity and combat centric Grade B, difficulty C-. Before we say Auf Wiedersehen to Hell's Nazi balls, let's take a detour. Map 25, Cat and Mouse. Each of Doom 64's designers contributed a fun secret map, accessible from the menu once you've completed Hectic. Part of our reward, I suppose. Randy Estrella's Cat and Mouse is a hazy maze with a handful of caged imps, 67 rockets, and a cyberdemon. Aim carefully. Grade D, difficulty C-. Map 26, Hardcore. The bonus maps enforce pistol starts, so there's no humiliating hardcore with a barrage of red beams. Danny Lewis gives you just enough rockets, cells, and recovery items to beat back 18 Mancubi and 11 Arachnos in a stairway circuit. The Mancubi are my worst nightmare, quietly teleporting behind me and telegraphing their rocket salvos even more quietly. It's almost a relief when the Cyberdemon shows up at the end. You get a fully loaded SSG to deal with them. Grade C, difficulty B-. Map 27, Playground. I kind of enjoy the madcap scramble at the start here, with pairs of blue bolts zinging around in every direction from the scrambling effect of the partial inviso, but this second Cyberdemon rocket duel is a chore, and I'm honestly more afraid of the last round's Macubi, especially when they're blurred by the stupid fog effect. Just enough already with the fog. Grade C-, difficulty C+. Map 28, The Absolution. I take it over Icon of Sin in a heartbeat, but The Absolution is about as low effort as boss battles get. It's just one room full of ammo and another room full of monsters. Just to make things interesting, Thing, I won't use my demon keys to close the portals, though it's well within your rights to do so in continuous play. The mother demon emerges when the last baddie bites the dust. She has some strong attacks that continuous players with at least 100 cells will probably never get to see. Having pistol started this wad once upon a time, I can promise you that she's not as much of a joke as she's often made out to be if you give her a fair shank. That said, in continuous play, this map dies with a whimper. Grade D, difficulty E. So, first, the positives. Doom 64 is the most unique interpretation of the classic Doom formula. It's a visual powerhouse, and for the most part, the sound design aged remarkably well. Aubrey Hodge's score is an asset, and I dare say the levels work together as a campaign experience better than Doom 2 and Final Doom. Its horror-inflected sights and sounds laid the foundation for Doom 3 and captured the attention and imagination of players even today. However, and this is a big however, I have several issues with Doom 64. Without Archies, Chain Gunners, and Revenants, 64's monster lineup feels inadequate next to Doom 2's, and the designers do almost nothing to compensate for their absence. Put bluntly, the action is inert and repetitive, partly because half of your arsenal is worthless or puny, and partly because half the enemies are imp derivatives. Even after four playthroughs, Doom 64's individual maps have left little to no imprint on my memory. I'll take the inconsistencies of Doom 1, 2, and Final Doom any day, because there isn't a single map in Doom 64 with the personality to match the likes of Perfect Hatred, Halls of the Damned, The Chasm, Hunted, or Mount Payne. I think my impassivity towards Doom 64 can best be summarized by Midway's decision to remove Doom Guy's mug from the status bar. The game sacrifices the more fun-loving roots of its forebears to alienate and therefore immerse the player in the horror it weaves. Doom 64 certainly achieves something different, but my personal view is that it takes almost as many steps back as it does forward. My final grade for Doom 64 is a C+. It beats out Doom 2, but Doom 2 obviously had greater potential, and its highs are higher than Doom 64's. Difficulty-wise, it's been many moons since I've handed out a grade this low, but I'm giving Doom 64 a D-, with the caveat that this set is child's play only if you're playing continuously. Now for my Dean's list. Valedictorian. Map 31. In the Void. Salutatorian. Map 19. The Spiral. Class President, Map 26, Hardcore, and the dunce cap goes to Map 32, Hectic. As in, what the hectic were they thinking? Thank you very much for watching, and please feel free to share your thoughts on Doom 64 down below. I'd love to hear what you think, and I'll heart your comments to let you know I've read them. Now, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge my generous patrons. AR, Aaron Allen, Agile Jackson, Agoo XYZ, Akali, Alec Wehrman, Alex M, Alex Topfer, Bo Higginbotham, Beatbeard, Ben Barrett, Birdburn, Brother JG, Builder Sith, Bitefire, Kappa Bitch, Captain Wave, Kali Bluefin, Cheese Wheel, Chris Duthat, Chris O'Neill, 
Christopher Hart, Christophine Place, Dan, Dave Davidson, Delirium, Dorothy Miller, Eggboy, Ember, Emma Essex, Faithful, Felix Wilson, Francis T218, General Roasterock, Glenn Marmon, Griffin Upchurch, Holy Hell Revealed When, Hyak Show, In Captivity, Jeff Hibbert, Jeff Sherilla, Jose Ballestero, Josh Ballard, Jude, Just Some Schmuck, Just Great 98, Camille Bernadotte, Killplane, Leon Staten, Logan Lazalda, Mark Rowland, Master Drew 117, Matt, Matthew Gower, Michael Akins, Mixer, MK2021, Moco Mothman MM47, Mosicon, Myolden, Nafferty, Neurometry, Knights 108, Number 26, NX Avery, Omnibot, Orion Burke Poole, Painful Hill 72, Pezaveng Zhange, Philip Coffey, Pixel Perfect, Pyro She, Randy A, Reese, Rufy, Rune, Sean Doherty, Sega Monkey, Sid Menon, Space Clanka, Spinner 8, Stonemason, Stupid Nick, Sylvester Priss, Taracushino, The Cloptologist, The Dinosaur Heretic, TJG1289, Trilby Trillion, Turbine 2K5, Why Be Monata Crab, and William Huber. Thank you. I appreciate you all very much. This is Mount Payne 27, and I'll see you in the next episode of Dean of Doom. Or will it be sawed off wads? <laughs>